Good evening and a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. It is the Geelong Region Soccer Show, episode 82. My name is Tonchi Prusak. I'm one half of the co-hosts. Your other co-host, he joins me as he does week in, week out, Steve Curtin. Steve, we say it every week, but it's going to really get, we're going to get sick of saying it, but what a busy week of weekend of football it was. The weekend just gone by. Yeah, it almost sounds like a panel TV show that was popular <laughs> in the 90s. What a big week in football it has been, to steal a phrase from someone there who's on the uh, hot seat these days, I think. But, yeah, look, it has been. There's been a lot going on. There's been a lot of big results coming in. We've got every week we've got a big local derby taking place to dissect, and uh, it's not that long till the country championships as well. But one thing that's exciting this week, mate, is that just hot off the heels of uh, celebrating female football week, this week we're now celebrating the uh, National Volunteers Week and yeah. Football Victoria is also getting on board with making the most of the celebrations of National uh, Volunteers Week because it's uh, the unsung heroes in football that keep our game going and make it the great game that it is and the countless amount of unsung heroes and volunteers that just plug away and get the job done behind the scenes just through their own kindness and dedication to the sport and, and for the sake of their friends, families and club mates. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing and uh, we mm. can't do enough to recognise that, Tonch. Oh, absolutely. Look, hot on the heels last week of um, Female Football Week, which actually went for about a week and a half, in, in fact, almost close to two weeks. So it was almost like a female football fortnight. Uh, we paid homage to the female development side of the game and it was... Um, it was a really, really good time to really, really um, like acknowledge, acknowledge all the good things that are happening in that part of the game. And now it's uh, National Volunteer Week. So uh, absolutely the unsung heroes, you week in, week out. And, and the thing is, every every club has its absolute legend, absolute um, legend of a volunteer. And uh, this week, I guess, is a great opportunity to uh, to to uh, acknowledge those. And Look, this is what this show is all about. This show is all about um, viewers getting to know some of the clubs that, that, that you know, are around our region um, and, indeed, you know, who are contributing greatly to our sport. But, uh, Steve, what else is um, what awaiting viewers on tonight in tonight's show? Yeah, well, we're going to have our usual news desk and then we're going to look through some of the results from the weekend in the NPL, the State League, the VPLW, the Local League. And, of course, uh, look look ahead to the games coming up next weekend as well. But we've also got a great guest coming on. We've got an inter, international footballer who played uh, in between the posts in uh, the high highs of the game in Europe under the bright lights there. He uh, is going to be joining us to talk about what he's up to at the moment, which includes working at the Western Heights College. And uh, I must say, wouldn't it be good to be a high school kid these days oh, and have a fantastic... Oh. Football. <laughs> Football. If coach. only the kid, if you only know, the yeah. kids of today knew. Oh my, I'm yeah. starting to sound like my parents. But back, back in the day, if you only knew how hard it was for. Me. Now, speaking of which, if there are any grade five or six students um, um, tuning into tonight's uh, show, make sure to pop down in the comments section which school you come from or which club you're playing for at the moment. And parents, a special message for you. Yes, I know it's Monday night and the kids need to be in bed early, but you do want to keep them up at least till about or oh, 8.30, past 8.30, when we've got our tonight's guest on who will talk all about the innovative new specialist soccer program at Western Heights College to be introduced as of next year. Um, um, and that follows AFL, basketball, netball, um, which have already been part of that um, school's yeah. program. And I do believe tennis as well may have been introduced this year. But uh, soccer or football, the real football, is coming to Western Heights College. And already I'm hearing of parents whose kids are in private schools and you know well-credentialed private schools in the local region are actually um, considering taking their kids out and um, relocating them to you know, a government school such as Western Heights. I mean, that's before the program's even started. So, yeah. folks, do hold on for tonight. It's going to be a major, major show. Um, Steve, now, before we get into the news desk, we also have to pay homage to our um, sponsor for tonight's episode. Uh, um, we're really, really proud and thankful 
to have Stuart Grimley MP, the state member for Western Victoria, um, sponsoring tonight's show. Stuart has been a big, big supporter of football over the years, being an uh, being a, actual co-founder of the Armstrong United Football Club, um, and he's doing some great things in state parliament, which can't be said for a a lot of other politicians, and it is election week this week, so make sure you make your vote count, and that's uh, that's it from the po- political messaging. But um, yeah, um, big thanks to <laughs> big thanks to Stuart Grimley uh, for sponsoring this week's show. We're going to hear a little bit from Stuart, and then straight after that, Steve, it's the news desk. So don't go away, folks. It's the Long Region Soccer Show. Hi, I'm Stuart Grimley state member for Western Victoria and the state leader for Darren Hench's Justice Party. I'm an Armstrong Creek local and previously involved with Armstrong United Football Club for a number of years. It's great to see so many people back out on the pitch and enjoying the world game after two years of COVID. As your local member of parliament, I have a passion for justice. I've been working towards bail, parole and sentencing reform, family violence prevention, protecting victims over perpetrators, mental health support, establishing a public child sex offender register and animal justice. As a regional MP, I'm strongly committed to standing up for regional and rural communities. I want to ensure Western Victoria has the best representation possible and we receive our fair share of funding. If you have any state or local issues, I encourage you to contact my office on 5218 5001 or visit my electorate office at 1 of 15 Pearl Street in Torquay or even find me online at stuartgrimley.com. Funded by the... All right, it's uh, it's a news desk time for Monday the 16th of May 2022, and we'll start with, well, it is a sombre note that we'll start with, as uh, we've got the news come through that the uh, the funeral for the the late Mr. Frankie Simovich will be celebrated at the Holy Family Church in Separation Street in Bell Park on Tuesday, May seventeenth. That is that is tomorrow. The service will begin with the eulogy and visual tribute at eleven, with the mass to commence at eleven thirty, followed by the burial at the Eastern Cemetery. Frankie's wishes was to have those attending to wear their uh, their North Geelong top. So if you are from Elko Park and you're heading there, make sure you uh, put on the, the colours of the club and um, I'm sure he'll be uh, remembered with uh, many, many fond memories, don't you? Yeah, Frankie was um, heavily involved at the Gordon um, a few years back. He was actually instrumental in the Gordon sponsoring our very show. And um, even if you weren't from North Geelong, you probably ran into Frank Simovic many, many times, either at Elko Park, around the traps um, in the northern suburbs at, at any one of the many cl- um, clubs around town. Um, and you would have seen him at the gates, often manning the gates. He was one of those people, when we talk about unsung heroes, we talk about absolutely dedicated uh, um, volunteers. Frankie was the salt of the earth type of a person. He had many of his, many um, health issues himself over, over the years. He had um, a kidney transplants. He had all sorts of um, other health issues as well. In fact, um, I think his claim to fame, Um, was that he actually represented Australia, if I'm not mistaken, in the World Transplant Games and was a real big supporter and advocate of um, uh, kidney donors, donorship and and transplant um, charities as well throughout his time. So um, he suddenly did pass away just last week, I think it was recently, and um, quite sad. Um, and you know, you know, for those that did know him, or for those that certainly knew his family, who were very heavily involved um, in football down at, and continue to be involved in football down at Elko Park. Um, those are the details. So yeah, tomorrow uh, at the Holy Family Church in Bell Park, uh, the eulogy and visual tribute, as Steve, as you said, at eleven o'clock, and that'll be followed by mass at eleven thirty. So uh, do wear your North Geelong top. And dare I say, even if you're not from North Geelong um, and you did know, wear your wear, wear your other team's um, tops. Um, I'll never forget a few years back, Tam McCulloch, who was very, very heavily involved in the um, in the um, uh, Geelong football fraternity when he passed. Um, um, he, uh, he's, uh, his widower 
um, urged everyone just to turn up in, in football football attire, and there were people from all clubs there, um, and it was just such a tremendous uh, show of respect. So uh, that's on tomorrow. Um, moving along to to all the news that happened over the weekend, Steve. Let's get going with uh, well, let's get going first of all with the NPL yeah. two and Frankie's old club or Frankie's club. North Geelong Warriors, gee, they're continuing to do really, really well at the top of the uh, competition standings. Yeah, their good form continued on the weekend on their trip to Kingston City where they won three goals to one to retain the top spot on the ladder. The goals to Caleb Mikulic, Lockie McGrath and Ryan Offerman sealing the results. And, uh, yeah, they hang on on top ahead of Moreland City, who uh, we saw firsthand on Saturday afternoon. But, yeah, North Geelong going along well this week and coming they're going to play FC Bullion Lions this Saturday, and uh, FC Bullion Lions are going along pretty well as well at the moment, uh, sitting in, I think, was that fourth place on the table. Yeah. So, yeah, could be a, a good match and a, a challenging match over at the Veneto Club because um, it's always a, a challenging place to go and play on the synthetic pitch there as well. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, how that match um, plays out for the uh, NPL 2. Caleb Mikulic scored another goal on the weekend. That he's taken his season's tally to 10, but he's yeah. not the region's highest goal scorer, would you believe? We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Yeah. But the region's highest goal scorer has, in fact, scored 13 goals to date, which is an incredible achievement. Um, Caleb, with 10 goals, is the region's second best goal yeah. scorer. And, gee, have we got a few goal scorers, I tell you what, at the moment. But, uh, a lot of goals really on the well. weekend, hey? Yeah. Now, mate, I was at the uh, Geelong game on the weekend on Saturday night. Yeah, and tell us about that. Say, it was an absolutely pulsating game. Um, Vedran Stojanovic is in super form, and this is an ominous sign for the rest of the league, the NPL 3 competition. He scored one goal, and then in a moment of absolute inspiration, he was sprawled on the ground on all fours, on it, basically on his bum. He's managed to kick this <laughs> ball out to Jaden Ilyovsky, who was the substitute. And uh, Jaden um, just... Rounded a defender, um, opened up a, a, an angle, scored the goal. It was an 85th minute winner. Mind you, by that stage, Geelong was down to 10 men after um, Cap Captain Mitch Johns um, did probably something he should not have done, and that was retaliate after the, his mm. direct opponent had chopped him down, earned to yellow, and uh, Mitchell just turned around and shoved his fingers into, the, uh, into this guy's face and said, how do you do? And the referee said, well... Off to uh, the showers you go, mate. And um, it was a, just, it was a grandstand finish, but an absolute thrill at Stead Park. And, um, mate, I tell you what, Geelong, you know, they're, they're slowly but surely creeping up the uh, NPL 3 ladder. And at the moment, they find themselves in fifth position. After about, what, two or three weeks ago, they were almost like in a relegation zone. Yeah, so, what's three wins in a row, just picked up nine points yeah. just like that. And you see how much, and they're up with the uh, with the A-League Reserve sides and and Preston Lions, so they're they're right up there now. Yeah, big game next week against Melbourne Victory yeah. away. Uh, this is a great opportunity for them to be able to uh, you know leapfrog um, Victory, um, or maybe not leapfrog them because they are three points ahead of Geelong at the moment, but certainly move even closer to the top. So this will be a, a really a, a crucial away fixture for Geelong, and um, un unfortunately they'll be without the services of Mitchell Johns, but. Uh, yeah, look, uh, let's see if the Red and Blacks can uh, pull through and uh, get one on on um, on a victory. That's right. That's right. Well, let's talk about the state leagues now. We know we've got Santino tuning in and he's very excited to be joining us tonight. And we thank you for your company, mate. Uh, his side, Carayo, um, won all on the weekend at uh, FC Strathmore at Strathnaver Reserve. So uh, that goal coming courtesy of an own goal to get Carayo onto the scoreboard. So... They grab a point from that away trip. I guess that's not the end of the world. Um, they would have liked to have got more, given that Strathmore is languishing down the bottom, but still a yeah, point. We had, and we, we spoke to their manager last night, Mickey Tolino. We did. We did on the Football Out West show. So if you are, if um, if you would like to hear that the replay of that um, interview with um, with with um, Strathmore um, coach Mickey Cholina, ex North Geelong coach, by the way, yeah. um, jump onto YouTube on the Football Out West show YouTube channel. And um, from all accounts, um, and this is what I'm hearing from actual Carayo insiders, they were very, very lucky, very lucky. Um, it wasn't exactly the best performance. But look, this week they've got a home game against Sydenham Park. Um, at the very early time, 2.15 kickoff, 
and that's because they are accommodating Galaxy, who will be um, playing their game on Saturday evening at 5.15 at Hume Reserve. So, look, um, do yourself a favour. If your team's not playing this weekend or you want to just um, um, uh, after your team has played and you want to watch the uh, Galaxy Girls in action, come down to Hume Reserve. If you haven't seen the new club rooms, you'll see the new club rooms. Absolutely fantastic, lavish facilities. And there's going to be a feast of football this Saturday at Hume Reserve. So uh, a lot's happening down there. Yeah, great Rangers. Stuff. Great What's stuff, going Steve. on at Rangers? Yeah, not a good weekend for Rangers in the men's side of things, at least. They went to Moomba Park and they were down by Moreland United, two goals to nil. So no points for on the weekend for Rangers. Their next outing will be this Saturday when they host Western Suburbs at Myers Reserve. And as you can see there, that was a battle of 11th and 12th. So, yeah, disappointing result, I guess. But um, hopefully some things, not that we were able to witness the game, but hopefully there were some things for Rangers to build on as they come into a, a home match this weekend. And Western Suburbs in ninth place there. So Geelong Rangers should see themselves uh, being a chance to maybe get some points out of that one. Yeah, uh, look, nine rounds in, they're yet to uh, taste victory. So hopefully that can change this Saturday up at Myers Reserve as well. Uh, wishing all the, the, the Geelong Rangers all the very, very best for, for uh, this one. Uh, we're moving al moving along then to uh, State 4. State 4, is it? Yep. So, yeah, State 4. Um, yeah, a couple of, uh, couple of good results for our State 4 clubs, particularly Surf Coast going to Gisborne. Getting a 2-1 win courtesy of Nathan Cook and Matt Humphreys, who found the back of the net. So difficult place to go and probably good to go there on Saturday when the weather wasn't so freezing cold because it's going to be a place that you don't want to go to come July and August. That's for sure. Yeah. It has been. Golden Plains, they got a point. Uh, they drew with uh, Spring Hills 1-all uh, on the road as well. So that's that's not the worst result going around with uh, Korth who, who getting the goal while um, Bell Park went to Truganina Hornets and Daniel Conti found the back of the net to see them draw 1-1 on the road as well. So a bunch of road trips for our State League four clubs. And look, no one got beaten, I guess. No one got beaten. The, what, last week, I think everyone got beaten, and this time no one got yeah. beaten. So hopefully that trend can continue this week in Round 10. Surf Coast edging up the ladder. They've got a game in hand, so they're on 15 points. And even if they manage to... Uh, um, take that win. I think it was against Westside Strikers, which is going to be a tough game as it is. Yeah. They will still remain in fifth spot. So they've had a sort of a little bit of an inconsistent period there, five wins and three losses so far this year. Bell Park, look, they've got a very young side, a very, very young side indeed. Um, I, I saw um, on their social media um, just the other, I think it was today, a, um, a 15 and 16-year-old have made their wow. uh, 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 the senior debuts in recent weeks. Yeah. Golden Plains, the same thing, really struggling at the foot of the ladder, but they have got um, a lot of young players. So I guess that's – so I guess it's not an excuse, but that's that's what's happening at the moment. Yeah, it's so. an opportunity, we'll say. It's an opportunity. Yeah. And, and all three of those sides are at home this weekend, and Golden Plains might be a chance against the Truganina Hornets, perhaps. Surf Coast will fancy their chances at Banyal Worry to knock off Greenvale United and Bell Park against uh, Westside Strikers Caroline Springs. That could be an interesting game there at the Bell Park Sports Club as well. All those games at three o'clock this coming Saturday. Yeah, now let's turn our attention to State Five and look at some of the goals, some of the results in State Five. Wow, where do we start with that? Oh, we'll just go from the top of the list. Deacon Ducks, yeah. James Robinson scoring for them. They defeated Maribyrn on Greens at uh, Warren Ponds on the weekend. So just a good, good, hearty 1 0 win there for them. But 1 1 0 wasn't enough for Bar when they decided to go for 11 0 with uh, their trip to Shell Road Reserve with uh, Patrick Scusa scoring a hat trick, Milton Bailey, Christian Marn, Jack Kelly, Alex Broska. George Gower, Blake Robinson, Billy Robinson, Finn Duncan. I feel like I've read out the whole team sheet there. <laughs> players who got on the score Pretty sheet much. there. So, so um, we, we thought Bowen might go down there and flex their muscle. It looks like they certainly didn't uh, didn't hold back at all against the Waves. Now, Steve, listen to this. Dale Harris, he's the coach of the Bowen side. He's never happy young, um, young Mr. Harris. Oh, he probably hasn't been called young for a long time. But Dale is not happy speaking to him after the, uh, after the game. He was still looking for nitpicking, I guess, nitpicking for things that weren't right. And he goes, look, I'm very surprised that Milton Bailey and Christian Mann 
only scored singles apiece. Yeah, that is surprising, to be fair. (laughs) (laughs) Milton Bailey, in fact, is the region's highest goal scorer at the moment. He's bagged 13 goals, the teenager. Absolutely scintillating form this year. Christian Maher, not far behind. He's now up to nine goals. Um, quite incredible. So, um, But it's, it's great to see from Barnes' point of view, they really are starting to spread it around. Patrick Skoos, a, a hat-trick there. He's taken his season's tally to five goals. Uh, but really, Barn were unstoppable. And Surfside Waves coach um, Pablo Mujica, who we had on the, on the program, um, was it just last week? I think it was, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, actually said, or was it a couple of weeks ago? Actually yeah, said... Yeah, he goes, his comment was, look, um, I invited Dale Harris to the poker table and he took the whole loot. Um, so <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking that's at it. Good summary. Yeah, absolutely. What do you do? Good summary do you from do? Teams, team's gone down 11-0. Uh, yeah. Lara United, mate, they, they also seem to be a little bit unstoppable. Yeah, we, we saw, speaking of bags of goals, Lachlan Lazaric with four goals, Oscar Mayondo with two, and Tristan McGrath also with a single there. Seven nil win at, at Wyndham FC is, yeah, pretty good going by the Lara boys. So, yeah, good result. And then you've got the table there on the screen. Barwon leading the way on top of the league now. Deacon Ducks, they're flying high in third as well. Lara in ninth and uh, the Surfside Waves sitting in 11th place this weekend we've got another derby coming up in this league and we always do because it is almost the well we'll call it vicariously if not just legitimately the Geelong League this one Deacon yeah. Uni versus Surfside Waves at uh at Warren Ponds at three o'clock this Saturday that's pretty pretty good match uh match up um Barwon against uh Ballarat at Grovedale Reserve also at three and Lara United against Melton Phoenix at Lara Rec Reserve, also at 3 o'clock. A couple of uh, exciting fixtures there, and I think Ballarat might have caused Bowen a few problems in previous seasons too. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how that one goes. could be a difficult game or more difficult than their most recent game at least. Yeah, like, okay. Um, well, we're going to take a very, very short break, a very quick break, by the way. Um, when we return, which it's going to be... Um, um, the women's tie- side of things. We're going to look at the women's competition and we're also going to have a very, very quick look at the local divisions as well. So don't go away, folks. It's um, eight, it's season four, episode 82 of the Geelong Region Soccer Show. And we've got a huge guest coming up. Um, he's just entered the green room as well, former Croatian international and North Geelong legend, Joey Didelica. He'll be joining us very, very shortly to talk about the innovative new program at Western Heights College. Folks, don't go away. We'll be back right away. Welcome back to the Geelong Region Soccer Show. Steve, let's get into the um, VPLW competition straight away, the Women's Victorian Premier League. Yeah, let's have a look at that. So it it wasn't the result that Geelong Galaxy was hoping for on the weekend as they scored the first goal of this game. And I saw some footage of it today as well on the social channels. Uh, Shared that one on Twitter. Check it out if you can. Geelong Galaxy going from defence to attack with Kylie Alexa banging home a goal um, on the end of a fantastic team move. But they ended up going on to lose that game 3-1 at uh, Burundara Carey Eagles, who are the top side there, as you can see on the table. So the result on the road, not what Galaxy wanted. This weekend, they've got a chance to redeem themselves when they play in that double header at uh, Cryo's ground, their Hume Reserve, their new home ground as well. They're playing Preston Lions at 5.15, so that's a really good time if you're local team is playing at three you can get along after that and support the girls and uh, who wouldn't want to because they're playing some really good football so far this season and often scoring lots of goals expect a pretty big crowd because Preston Lions always travel well with uh, their fans so expect a very very good crowd in that one and mind you Kariah taking on Sydenham Park another Macedonian community-backed club 
in the early game, the state one fixture. So it's going to be quite a lot of um, a lot of um, supporters there on Saturday night. So do get yourself down to Hume Reserve. Now, Steve, um, in the state league, women, that all three teams once again remained undefeated. Great stuff there. Yeah, North Geelong going well. Lara Herich, Louisa Crump, and Julia Ak- Ma- uh, Akmacic all g- getting uh, on the score sheet and a 3 1 win over Bundura United. So a great result there. And North Geelong will go on to play Essen and Royals next weekend at Alco Park at 3 o'clock on Sunday. So a good chance to continue their winning ways with Essen and Royals sitting in fifth place currently. So yeah, another good result for the newcomers to State League 1. In the State League 2, Lara Drew with the St. Auburn Saints 2-2. Taylor Eastway and Daisy Sanders scoring the goals. So uh, a good result, uh, a somewhat good result for Lara there at home. They've got another chance to uh, get out there and do their thing this weekend. At 1 o'clock, they're going to play the Port Melbourne Sharks uh, in the match on Sunday. So now remember to say- the girls there. They're sitting on top of the table. Yeah, they are. They're doing really, really well. And and that that um, game doesn't – that scoreline – or that ladder, I should say, doesn't um, take into account that draw um, against St. Auburn Saints. But, look, St. Auburn Saints, they've had a kind of an indifferent start to the season. But, in effect, they are um, a State League One side. And the only reason they're not in State League One this year is because they couldn't field a reserves team. Um, and, mm. hence, they've lost a lot of players. But, having said that, they've still got a lot of that core from last year. So, um, Lara United dropping points for the first time. Uh, mind you, uh, like I said, it's, it, it was against a very, very difficult side. But uh, uh, jump onto Lara United's Facebook page and you'll actually see a lot of footage from there. The game was actually streamed live. And mm-hmm. um, the, the, some of the uh, young junior girls um, you know, provided a little, a little bit of a um, pathway, if you like. What do they call those little... Um, cues the type of thing where the uh, senior women ran through type of thing almost like a guard of honor i suppose yeah, yeah. um and that was really really good to see so nice. uh, well well done to them but the big run but the big result happened in state three of the women's um steve caroline springs george cross are a real heavyweight and we're probably expected to do very very well um and and figure prominently in um the chase for promotion there uh, they lost to our Geelong Rangers 3-1 at the um, City Vista Reserve. Tell us more about this game. Yeah, Geelong Rangers really going out to City Vista and planting their flag in the ground in that fantastic quality playing mm-hmm. pitch it is too as well. But they've gone there and made a statement piece with a 3-1 win with uh, goals from Sophie Emota, Anna Bilic and Rachel Zara, ensuring that they were going to come home all smiles with the three points from that game and they're going to look to continue their winning ways when they host North Melbourne Athletic this Sunday at one o'clock at Myers Reserve and uh, you know I fancy that they might uh, get the points in that one but it's a it's a real six point game because these teams are very closely placed on the table and it looks like that table doesn't factor in North Ge- uh, sorry Geelong Rangers' latest win so that will actually push them up a little bit higher yeah. if that's the case. Yeah, actually, it doesn't. Have, or is that that game in hand? That's they've got a game, game in, hand, in hand, Steve. That's a game in out. hand against Point Cook, yeah. and yeah, look at Point it. Cook is at the moment. So that is definitely a winnable game. And effectively, if should the Rangers win that outstanding game against Point Cook, they will sail to the top of the competition standings, overtaking Avondale on points. So um, first year that um, Geelong Rangers are in the state league women's competition. And they're following in the footsteps of North Geelong, who did something very, very similar last year, also in State 3. And they now they find themselves in State 1. Quite a, quite a big jump, actually. But they seem to be doing really, really well. And, um, and that's you know, absolutely great to see that the women um, in Geelong are doing so well. Uh, mate, we could talk about that. Um, and we'll probably we'll talk about that in one of the upcoming um, uh, episodes. What happens if all of these four Geelong women's teams get promoted? They'll have to find players that are going to boost their, 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 um, their squads. And is there enough talent? Is there enough quality and talent in Geelong at the moment to do so? But we'll uh, tackle that, um, you know, down the track. Speaking of the women, the local league, let's have a look at the Geelong League, the Women's Division One competition. Yeah, we had a couple of matches uh, take place on the weekend. We saw Deacon Ducks 4-1 winners over Drysdale with Hannah Gordon scoring a double, Madison Jones scoring a double, Drysdale 
fortunate to have uh, an own goal as their goal scorer. So 4-1 there for the Deakin Ducks, a good result for them in the women's Div 1. Surf Coast defeating Barwin 2-1. Maddie Lambert and Minnie Feek scoring for Surf Coast. Janet Copper for Barwin. And in the other match, it was Geelong Rangers 1, Geelong 2, with Rangers getting the goal through Derby Mayfield, off the of Geelong Liz Starsevich and Belinda Mata, uh, what is that, Mata Rugic? Matarugic, yep. Yep. So yep. Uh, that's the weekend ahead. They're going to do battle this Saturday. Surf Coast versus Deacon Ducks, Drysdale versus Geelong Rangers and Barwon versus Geelong. All those matches are kicking off at that early time, one o'clock on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Um, now the word I'm hearing, I'm hearing just, I'm hearing a rumor that there is a very, very young lass that plays for Geelong Rangers. Uh, that is the development squad, and and they actually had yeah. to get a uh, dispensation for her because she's very young. She might be something like thirteen or fourteen. Um, so I don't know the glasses name, but if anyone is in uh, in the chat and they can, uh, they do know who this person. Is. Pop her, pop her name there. I am told this is the next big thing in Geelong women's soccer. This young lass from Geelong Rangers. So uh, uh, we'll have to find out her name and uh, maybe even get her on one of the um, shows coming up. But uh, there's a lot, a lot of talent um, underlying in some of those, um, some of those junior teams, if you like, around the region. That's yeah. great to see. Moving on to the men's Division One competition, uh, Steve. Yeah, we had uh, just one game on Friday night, and it was Alco Park Cardinals 2, Barwon 3. The goals for the Cardinals, Daniel Grozanowski and Lachlan Sakita, while for Barwon, Adam Leather scored a hat-trick to get them the win. So no doubt Adam was pretty happy with himself after that fantastic effort. On Sunday, another hat-trick, Callan Gerritsen scoring three for Armstrong United to defeat Surf Coast while Breakwater Eagles drew in a high-scoring match, 3-3 with Bell Park down at Breakwater with Jack Wilson, Daniel Lavelle and Ronan Gillam scoring for Breakwater and for Bell Park. Uh, we don't have the scorers, but if someone could submit them, we're happy to read them out as always. Bow on top at the moment, three games, three wins, nine points. They've got a 100% record. Surf Coast in second spot with seven from four games. FC Leopold doing well. They've got four points undefeated, one win and a draw from their two games thus far. And then Armstrong United making up the top four. Um, I guess it's not – well, you'd really be um, hard-pressed if you didn't make the top four come the end of the year with only three teams missing out. I guess that's the uh, way the competition sort of works. Looking ahead um, to the games yeah. this weekend, Steve. Yeah, with Breakwater, they're taking a week off with the bye. All other games, all the teams, are playing at 3 o'clock on Sunday, which is Surf Coast hosting Le FC Leopold, Bell Park hosting the Cardinals, and Barwon hosting the Pelicans. And that brings us to the end of the local um, league roundup. Jeez, it seems to be getting longer and longer every week. There's just so much to catch, but uh, uh, nonetheless, it is um, it is awesome to see. Uh, Steve, we've got a really special guest coming um, uh, um, tonight, um, and he's going to be joining us very, very shortly. He's, um, as we said, former Croatian international. He's a North Geelong Warriors legend, and he's, um, he's now the newly appointed head of soccer at Western Heights uh, College in Hamlin Heights. They've got a very, very innovative program starting next year, and I guess uh, a lot of our viewers have been waiting to, to, for us to uh, bring Joey Didlitz on before we do bring him on, here's a short video of um, what Western Heights College are offering. Now, this is an old promo for a 2020 program, but I guess um, it, it, despite the sports then um, being football or AFL, um, basketball and netball, um, I think you get the gist of what the school is all about. So uh, it only goes for a couple of minutes. Uh, sit back, relax. Uh, watch this as an intro to our guest tonight. My name's Fiona Taylor and I'm the very proud principal of Western Heights College and I'm very excited about the journey in learning and sport that we're about to embark on. The type of students we're looking for are students who want to listen and learn, students who have a drive and students who have a solid understanding of working hard and yet enjoying themselves. We believe our program will offer enormous support 
to our students, both uh, mentally and physically. We'll also be accessing indoor arenas around Geelong. We'll be building a, a really expansive editing system where footage can be watched and a lot of game sense learnt. We'll also have the capacity through our networking and contacts to access some fantastic people that have played and coached at the at the very highest level. We, we want players who are willing to come in and work as hard as they possibly can. We're one of the first regional specialist basketball programs in country Victoria and I think it gives an opportunity for country athletes who don't want to move to the city a chance to come here to Geelong and be part of something special. I'm definitely one of those student athletes that can't sit down for more than five minutes so PE was 100% my outlet. Unfortunately we didn't have a program like this back in the day when I was at school. Luckily enough I was able to go to the Institute of Sport in year 12. I would have loved to have this back in the day. I think it's you know a great pathway if you want to further your juniors career and make it with the Vic teams or even you know enter WNBL at some stage. I'm really excited about the Western Heights sporting program given it's it's still in its infancy, it's brand new, there's a lot of enthusiasm and energy around the place. We've got a fantastic staff running it, we've got state-of-the-art facilities, um, just really, really exciting time to be a part of it. We really want Western Heights College to be recognised and regarded as an innovative, high-performance and an inclusive education and sporting facility within our community. We want it to deliver leading edge programs and services which will provide that training hub and developmental environment for our young people and our student athletes in our program. So the students will balance their academics and their learning by individual tailoring of each program for each student to maintain a really holistic balance of their learning, their family and obviously their sporting passion and desires as well and goals that they have for their sport. There you go. Um, wow, wow, wow is all I can absolutely say. Why, <laughs> Stephen Curtin, did we not have a program like that when we were young? Oh, oh. my Lord, that is amazing. Oh, and, mate, I remember, remember uh, in the old Catholic College Bendigo days going to the uh, the school regional uh, sport rep team and um, we'd have like a PE teacher who was rejected from the Aussie rules team that didn't know offside or anything would be in charge of coaching. You know, it was not good times, but... Those days are over, it seems like, at least at Western Heights. And they do indeed. And welcoming to the show, he's been on the show before um, in a different capacity. He's the newly appointed head of soccer at Western Heights College, Joey Didlitz. So, Joey, you must be like a kid in a candy store when you look at just that. And that's got nothing to do with the soccer program. Exciting, super, u uber exciting times at Western Heights College, mate. You must be absolutely thrilled with what's happening um, there at Vines Road. Absolutely, Tonchi. Absolutely, Steve. I think it's a, a dream come true for uh, the kids of Geelong. Uh, I think they've got an environment there where they can thrive. They can do their sports during the day, during school time, and also their academic work. So very, very excited, and uh, I'm glad it's down in Geelong. Now, speaking of talented yeah. kids, before we do go on, Ivan Kovacev, thank you very much. Ivan actually has uh, um, popped in the comments section, Edie A. Bertie. Now, that, that's the name of the young lass. I think she's only like 13 years of age and she's already playing uh, um, senior football. That, that is great. Now, another co uh, connection here, Ivan Kovacev's brother, Eddie Kovacev, used to teach up at Chanel College around about the same time that the uh, football coach there at Western Heights used to coach. Macca, for a lot of you old Chanel College uh, students will know him, Brendan McCartney. Now, he's going to be your your uh, colleague next year, Joey. But tell us, mate, how did this all come about? How did this uh, specialist soccer program develop? Well, it's been really successful with the basketball program and the uh, AFL program as well as the netball program. They're really seeing the kids there thrive uh, in their academics as well as in the sports. Uh, so they thought, why not to introduce soccer? Because a lot of the book have a, an unbelievably, uh, we'll say, the talented group here in Geelong, um, as seen with the country championships. So they thought, why not bring it to Geelong? And um, instead of kids having to uh, go up to Melbourne to train in, you know, Maribyrnong schools and, and all over the shop. So, yeah, we're really thrilled to have it. And what's the likely format of the program going to be? Or is it underway? Are we are we kicking off next year or is it sort of underway in the second half of this year? No, we'll start in 2023, um, yep. but we've been hard at work now developing the program. Essentially, it's going to be run alongside the AFL program, which is uh, kids will have eight hours uh, a week um, concentrating on their soccer. 
and that will also involve some um, sports conditioning as well. They've got a, a leading gym there at, at the at the place. They, you know, you work with great professionals there uh, uh, as physios and sports trainers as well. And yeah, we'll be training um, at the leisure centre as well on the synthetic grass. So yeah, great facilities. And and does it extend to getting the group together and playing some sort of competitive, semi-competitive matches against other schools and that sort of thing as well to get them that real um experience in, in the match intensity yeah absolutely um we've already hooked up with maribyrnong college uh, john faulkner uh, these sports schools uh, out there and they're really keen to have us on board as well um yeah we've been speaking about their programs as well and you know our, our program in geelong will be the best in victoria uh in terms of the hours that we'll dedicate to uh having the kids out there i mean Melbourne on high, they've pretty much got Melbourne City, Melbourne Victory players mm. throughout their academies. They have, you know, three, four hundred kids trialling out for, uh, you know, 11 spots essentially. Um, and they're training twice during the day, whereas, you know, we've got eight hours uh, dedicated to soccer during the week. So I'm sure these, these kids will fly. It's really a great environment for them. Now, um, Joey, we do joke that we wish we had something like this when we, <laughs> when we were young. We don't actually joke. We're fair dinkum. We're dead set. Fair dinkum. Serious. <laughs> but look, over the next 12 months, it really seems like it's going to be very exciting for talented young kids in Geelong. Um, there is talk of Western United, and, and we actually do know that because we had Anthony Frost on one of our um, sister programs, Football Out West, recently saying the Western United Academy launching next year. We've got this academy launching next year as well. So I guess this is a really exciting time for talented youngsters here. But are you kind of like hoping or maybe expecting that not just kids from Geelong will be looking to enrol at Western Heights, but we may be getting kids from the wider region um, really, you know, looking into enrolling at Western Heights next year because of the soccer program? Absolutely. We've had already uh, a lot of inquiries um, from Melbourne schools or Melbourne kids uh, in their primary schools. They've heard of the program starting. Because as I said, Tonchi, um, you know, with the uh, Fiona, the principal at the school, done a lot of research into not only the academics but also sports and seen that um, soccer players now need, you know, 12 to 15 hours per week of training. Um, and essentially we're giving them, you know, in our MPL program, four and a half hours. So... We're, we're probably a third of the way of, of European players, so we really need to bridge that gap. I just see now you've put up uh, the philosophy we'll be working on. Um, and as this change suggests, uh, we in Australia, we really work in the execution paradigm, um, whereas we should be working the perception decision-making. And this yeah, So take us through that. Mm. It's, take us through that. Um, um, and, and for the lay person, I guess the parent or whatever that might be listening in, um, the vision of the of the program um, based on, on on this success chain. Look, basically, of uh, you know having played in Europe and at Ajax Amsterdam, we really I've really looked into their academy a lot and spoken to a lot of sports directors around Europe. And the conclusion I came up with seeing the academies here when I arrived was we essentially work on a have been working on an execution paradigm, which is basic uh, distribution, running with the ball all of this sort of stuff, right? So the kids execute well, but they really struggle in seeing the game properly, making decisions properly. Um, so a lot of coaches don't know how to coach it. So, you know, I've done a lot of research and spoken to also coaches, so I'm really familiar with how to coach kids properly. Uh, and when you only get four and a half hours in the uh, MPL program, it only gives you four and a half hours to coach and perception, decision make, and a bit of execution. Whereas this way, I'll be able to get the kids early, work on every single aspect of this chain, and make sure that they're ready for um, you know the games. And you know, it will take a few years, but I'm sure the kids will will be flying when they when they come through it. Good to see that diagram there. It um, paints a good picture and it sort of whets awesome. the appetite for how exciting it is to see young players following that sort of pathway curriculum skill Steve, set. Steve, I just want to know, I just want to know, will there yeah. be provision for mature age students? Yeah. <laughs> can, we, <laughs> can we enroll? <laughs> Only under 40, don't you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I rules me out. Um, oh, I'm not going to sneak in there. Um, uh, yeah, and how does that come together with, I guess, the the kids and the importance of the, of their classroom learning and, and the theory 
both within the football and the theory within the, the usual uh, education as well. Like what happens, Steve, as well, they've got an accelerated, uh, like across the board, um, you know, they've got an accelerated learning program as well. So if your kid is doing well academically, then he can enter this accelerated program. What it does is, Steve, is just gets rid of, uh, I, I call it fluff in schools. If you look at yeah. the triangle of our, of our kids, if you just look at their um, timetable, you'll see a lot of drama, music, language, a lot, for me, it's a lot of fluff. So what they do is pretty much get rid of a language, you know, give you um, uh, one hour of music instead of three, one hour of drama instead of three, and give you, um, you know, your sport or your passion. So kids are loving coming to school. Um, they're loving learning. Their their marks are going up. Um, it's just they're excited coming to school each day because they're doing what they love and they're also uh, excelling academically. So it's a no-brainer and it really aligns with the European schools. You know, we're falling behind Europe big time, not only in, in soccer but also academically. So Australia needs to pull their finger out and start doing what this uh, principal is doing now and, and, you know, setting new rules pretty much and saying, you know, we can do this and we will do it because at the end of the day, it's the kids who are going to um, profit from all of this. Yeah, and, and on that as well, as if you're over in the Netherlands, would you find that most schools are, are doing something like this, if not all the schools? Absolutely. If you just look at the players in Europe, they're getting 12 to 15 hours of soccer. That's during the day mm -hmm. and after school. Um, and that's why we can't bridge the gap uh, footballing-wise. And if you do look at West, Westfields in Sydney, this is a, a sports school there which is producing the most uh, soccer players in Australia, like Aaron Moy, Harry Kuehl came from there, uh, Alex Bross, Jason Chulina, you know, Connor Chapman now, even the uh, Matty Ryan was there. So most of these kids who are doing well in Australia are coming from Westfields. And at Westfields, they have three sessions during the week, um, yep. during school hours, and then they go to their clubs and pretty much have four sessions. So they're getting, I wouldn't say as much as Europe in terms of time with coaches, but they're getting more than any other Australians. And it's seen, it's proofs in the pudding. Yeah, I've, I look, um, Josip Zilic, the ex-North Geelong Warriors coach, uh, a president who is now also uh, my colleague on one of our sister podcasts, the Oz Crow Soccer Show on a Wednesday. He's moved up to the Gold Coast with his boy. And he was telling me up in Queensland, the school system is so advanced, they actually have their... Um, schools competition on the weekend the npl in queensland the npl juniors have actually moved their games to a midweek fixturing so they don't clash with the schools that's how well advanced and well structured the schools competition up there is and you just mentioned new south well so we really in victoria are starting to lag behind but i guess this is a start this is a start how can kids and parents who are interested in, in, in their kids enrolling in this program, how can they get involved with this um, intake of next year? Is it open just to year sevens or how is it going to – what's it going to be open to? Um, no, it's, it's open to year sevens, uh, year seven to 11. There, there's an yeah. open day tomorrow at 6 o'clock at the school. So if you are interested, come along, have a look, uh, inquire, um, and then we take it from there. There are going to be trials because it is going to be an elite program. I won't be taking um, – more than 20 kids per age group or per year level. So I really want to keep it a lead and really want to keep it to those kids who are, who are good enough. And it does apply for girls and boys in the schools. So, so come along. That's a wrong date there, by the way. It, um, it is, say, Monday 2nd of May. I think that may have been a previous uh, ID session. Is that right? So tomorrow. It was. Um, between, yeah, that was for between, sevens. Yeah. So tomorrow between 4 and 5 p.m., is that right, at, at Western Heights? Or bring that. No, uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock there will be an open day. 6 p.m. Uh, and that's at Western principal, Heights College? Correct. So the principal yeah. will be talking and then we'll go into going over the program for next year. And then there will be trials, I think. Well, we've not decided yet, but I think uh, next next month. The now, there's also um, – um, we've also got a scoop. We've actually got a, quite a scoop here from the Geelong Advertiser in tomorrow's – we're like the front page. You know, they have, they have it on the Sky News. Or whatever, so uh -huh. Front page. Tomorrow's front page, an exclusive uh, thanks to the sports department and Josh Barnes and Alex Oates. We've actually got the front page of tomorrow's junior sports supplement. Um, there on the front page of the Lift Out Supplement, helping next-gen hit new heights. Uh, did Litsa to lead college soccer program. So it's a great little article there about um, 
uh, the um, program that is at Western Heights College. So, uh, um, mate, it's going to cause some major, major waves, that's for sure. But uh, we're looking for, to looking to find out more about this. Uh, Steve, you're going to say something before I rudely interrupted you. Apologies for that. <laughs> that's all right. I'll put it on my invoice. Um, <laughs> uh, what's uh, what's planned for yourself, Joe, with your coaching? Um, you when we saw you recently, you said you're enjoying your time doing some work at Victory at the moment with their NPL and their youth program. Are you going to continue with that for the foreseeable future, or will you focus entirely on this Western Heights program? No, this will be my little project during the day with the Western Heights. Uh, I'm still committed to coaching. Um, we'll be back at North soon and coaching coaching there. Um, yeah, I, I just I love coaching, love helping the kids, and I'm still enjoying working um, as a specialist coach with Melbourne Victory and helping the uh, the juniors there. So really, really enjoying that. Now, that, is that a scoop there? Is that, uh, we've got Colin Payton, who's, who was uh, one of the North Geelong coaches. He's there saying super coach. So he'll be very excited to hear that uh, you may be coming back to, uh, back to uh, North Geelong. Is, 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 that a, uh, is that a sign, sealed and deliver deal? Or is that something to be uh, wait, watch this space type of thing? No, I was always, always going to come back. I just need a little break, a little bit of time yeah. to reflect and come back and come back uh, sharp and strong and ready for the, uh, the end of the season. Well, we're looking forward to finding out more about the Western Heights College program. As you said, tomorrow is an open day at the college at 6 o'clock on Vines Road there. Um, Geelong is going to be all the more richer for a program like this. And, um, ha and Western Heights College having someone like yourself heading the soccer program, um, I do not know that what sort of a treasure they've got when they've uh, appointed you. So I'm sure they'll find that out in due course. But... Uh, well, Thank you very much for joining us time, tonight. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> that was uh, Joey Diddlitz, uh, the head of soccer at Western Heights College. Um, wow, that's going to be an unbelievable program. And I'm going to go to bed tonight having dreams of what it would have been like if I was, you know, 11 years of age, 12 years of age, enrolling in a program like this. So, uh, oh, mate, you would have um, gone on to have 300 caps at Hyduk Split. There's no, there's no doubt oh, about it. Especially no someone with your, your height, you could have been there in central defence doing a splendid job. I'm heartbroken. Dinamo Zagreb over the just this morning have taken the Croatian crown yet again, the, the big rivals, but uh, not to worry. There's a big game coming up next weekend. Uh, that, mate, brings us pretty much to the end of our show. Um, as we said, um, a lot, lot happening this week. Um, once again, thank you to Stuart Grimley, MP, state member for Western Victoria, for sponsoring this week's episode. Um, it was absolutely great to have him on board. Mate, this is already episode 10 of this year. Mm. The year is just absolutely flying by, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. May is a long month. We're already, what are we, already halfway through it already. So, yeah, the next thing it'll be the... You feel the days getting shorter and shorter and shorter at the moment too when you go out at night time. So next thing we'll have the solstice and the days will be getting longer and it'll be the springtime. So don't worry, it'll be winter will come and go just like that, I'm sure. Or not. It could drag on and be really slow. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. And um, just a quick <laughs> reminder for those that are interested, the, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the funeral service for the late Frankie Simovic, who was heavily involved down at North Geelong Warriors, um, um, ironically, it is happening in the um, midst of National Volunteers Week. Um, that is on tomorrow at the Holy Family Church in um, in Bell Park with the eulogy. I think it was, what was it, 11 o'clock, was it? 11 and, yeah. yeah, 11 o'clock in the service to follow thereafter. Um, Steve, wishing you all, all the very best for the week ahead. Um, lots of action happening, Australia Cup action midweek. We've got lots of football, local community, NPL, A League. Yeah, We've got yeah, about A -League the A League finals this finals. midweek. Yeah. Western United taking on Melbourne Victory tomorrow, and then the uh, return leg on Saturday afternoon. It's all happening. Um, oh, we need to take a break after all that. We're going to take a break for another seven days. Thank you for being a part of tonight's show. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who's tuned in tonight. We really appreciate it. Parents, you can let your kids go to bed now after uh, what was a – we've tried to finish that a little bit earlier tonight. Um, and until next week, thank you very much for joining us here on the Geelong Region Soccer Show. Hope your team does well this coming weekend. Good night. Good night.